All right, so my name is Chris Ortiz. It's O-R-T-I-Z. The last name is, first name is C-H-R-I-S. Um, born September 9th, 1982, here in Lawrence, Kansas. Growing up, I went to Broken Arrow, South Junior High, and then Lawrence High School. And Broken Arrow was, from what I remember so long, it feels so long ago, was okay. I mean, never a rich, rich kid. Um, you know, grew up probably lower middle class, lower um, upper low uh, upper lower class maybe. I don't know, um, but never had too much money. Um, junior high is where things started to get very very sketchy. Um, I am more white, more light skin, more Caucasian based upon my mother's heritage. Um, but I still have my last name of Ortiz. Everybody knew who I was growing up because of my brother, you know, and my dad was tried to be very active in my life as far as being a coach and everything else for the little league teams that I played on. And he is very dark skinned, uh, very dark skinned uh, Mexican. He looks like a, you know, your stereotypical traditional Mexican. Um, and so everybody knew that I was Latino in a sense. And I just remember, I don't even remember what grade this was. I think it was seventh or eighth grade. I had, if anybody remembers the old South system, it was the blue lockers and the old circular uh, section before the whole new whatever was up, uh, the new design and new buildings were up. Um, and I just remember it was, I hated junior high. I hated junior high with a passion just because there were racists in Lawrence at that time. There were, you know, I don't know where, if it was their families who had taught them this or if it was, you know, their, you know, just picking it up somewhere. But um, because of people knowing my Latino heritage, my Latino background, I remember um, swastikas being painted on my locker in red paints. I remember there was, you know, by every single locker uh, room there were, or locker area, there was bathrooms, and there was always swastikas painted in the bathrooms and, you know, uh, white power, neo-Nazi translation things written in the bathrooms as well. And I know for, for a fact, there's one kid, I'm not going to say his last name, but his first name was Aaron, um, who was um, basically the biggest provocator of this style of... Um, action and um, vandalism. vandalism would be a good word but this type of terror I guess you can say it would be a, a better way to go about um, describing it and he would go through and when I was passing him in the hall he would go through and yell what I would later find out was neo-nazi German slogans uh, out at me when I was walking by um, he would, you know, give a little Hitler, hell Hitler salutes. Uh, I don't know when I would walk by, you know, it's just, and later on I find out he was also the one who was, him and a couple of his friends were the ones who were doing the swastikas all around my locker. And it was one of those things where it made me feel very uncomfortable. The school knew about it, of course, because, I mean, there's paint, red swastikas and, you know, Nazi symbolism, other Nazi symbolism and sayings and slogans all around, you know, that part of the school, and yet they couldn't really do anything because they could never catch who did it. Well, finally they did catch who, you know, who did it, Aaron, or at least who was the provocator of the whole ordeal and finally ended up expelling him. But that didn't stop really, well, it stopped at that time, but it didn't stop uh, in high school. In high school, there's another kid who, I guess, really did not like, um, Latinos as well, and um, I had a creative writing class with Miss Klumsky, I believe her name was. She was a very interesting teacher, but um, that's a different story. But um, there was a restroom up in the English hallway of Lawrence High at that time. Um, that was on the north side of the second floor on the east side of the hallway. Yes. And... Um, my the Miss Klumsky's uh, classroom was right next to that, and I never really thought of this kid as a threat or anything else. But eventually, I guess there was a bomb threat that he had placed a bomb and had made 
you know, this is once again, you know, 2000, 1999, 2000, you know, the infancy stages of what, you know, the internet is. And, uh, but I guess he had made some kind of claim or post on like MySpace or something like that, or some kind of WordPress blog that he had placed a bomb in there and was supposed to go off at a certain time. And, um, and it was supposed to be to, I guess, from my rem rem uh, my memory of the whole ordeal was to go through and cure the problem of the Latino population in the school, which really upset me because I actually sat right in front of this kid um, against you know the window wall, and yeah, I was just knowing that it was actually him afterwards sitting right behind me the whole entire time. It was really kind of freaked me out a little bit, but if that wasn't really as bad as what happened in junior high. I mean, hell, I still have nightmares from time to time about, you know, that stuff that happened in junior high. And, I mean, that's probably something that will ultimately traumatize me for the rest of my life. Um, I don't, I can't speak for my brother or sister. I do have a brother and a sister who are a lot more dark skinned than I am. And I can't speak for their instances, what they've experienced throughout the, uh, throughout their lives.